Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Rob. Let's draw the Major. I'm referring, of course, to Major Matoko Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell. For this particular drawing, we'll be doing her standalone complex version, the more revealing outfit. I'll be using Krita, which is an open source Photoshop like painting software. It has some stability problems, so in this video, you'll see the thing crash the desktop, I think, maybe twice. I don't know, I may have done a really good job editing it out. Maybe not. We'll see. Right now, I've set up my canvas for a portrait style drawing. And I'm just working through sketching out the basic thumbnail. Just getting my major shapes right now. I'm keeping it light, not pressing down too hard, because I don't erase my line art before going back through. I don't keep it on a separate layer, I just merge it straight into my final paint over. So to make my life easier later on, I keep this very, very light as I go. So here, I'm just working through forms, checking my anatomy, keeping it really, really light and quick. Good photo reference sometimes helps, especially for pleats in the area around the outside of the thigh, the hips, creases, near where the zipper meets the inseam, things like that. And I can see here I just flip the image. That's a very useful technique if you're not aware. Um, just to see an image brand new, to trick your brain into seeing it in something completely different. This will help you spot any errors in your anatomy, your perspective, weird things like that. So from time to time you're going to see me flip it back and forth as we keep working here. Okay, so now I'm zooming in, detailing in the face. This is kind of an awkward angle. It's more, it's not really a three quarters where people look best. This is more like a four fifths, so it's kind of wonky. So I have to erase and constantly adjust and tweak. It's not an angle that I'm really used to, but for this image, it, it would make the most sense. There's, there's no way to have her twist her neck around. Okay, so see, at this point, I've duplicated my pencils, set them blend mode into screen, and filled the background with white. Now, setting it to screen allows all the white of the line art to become transparent, and all of the black, where the actual lines are, to still remain which allows me to do things like this, working beneath the line art without actually affecting it. So here I'm just trying to set up the general tone. Ah, there was the desktop crash, nice. So I'm just trying to set up the general tone of the image, the colors that I want. I'm going for a sort of sci-fi, amber kind of thing here. Very deus ex. And here I'm just trying to identify a good color for the Major's hair. She's got a weird kind of purple-blue thing going on. Um, and when mixed with this orange lighting, it, it would, it's difficult to try and figure out exactly what that should be. So here I keep messing around with it, testing different saturations, different hues. And then I finally settle on something I think would look good. It's not quite as blue as the Major's real hair, but I'm going to do some adjustments and levels later on, so it should come out in the wash. That's my thinking at this point, anyway. So here I'm using a darker color toward the bottom of her hair, making it a little easier to render the lighting effects later on. Here I'm doing my saturation adjustments, trying to make it less cartoony. Colors in the real world tend to take on whatever light's falling on it. So even if you have really, really blue hair under this amber light, it won't be really, really blue. It'll be bluish amber, kind of desaturated as your eyes adjust to the light levels, that sort of thing. There's, there's a lot of interplay going on. Here, we're starting on the flesh tone, starting with the darkest shadows. Filling in highlights and then blending in between to get my mid tones. 
I'm going with a really simple lighting setup. It's just three points. I've got a main light coming from above, a fill light coming from behind the viewer, and then a rim light or accent light that's going to be off to the viewer's right. A very common setup, useful in photography, um, and doubly so in art. The accent color I chose because it is the complement of the overall color that we've got in the painting. On the color wheel there, you can see I just went exactly to the opposite side of the, the wheel and used that as my accent. Here I'm just running out forms. Now as I, to get the lighter and darker colors, usually when I go darker, I'll pick a more saturated version of the color I just picked up with the eyedropper, and usually when I'm going lighter, I pick a less saturated version. You could just go and change the actual brightness values, but I find that changing the saturation adds a little more oomph to the actual color. Uh, the contrast makes it a little more pleasing to the eye. Okay, here I'm just filling out, just filling out forms. Wrinkles are fun. Filling out the belt. And at this point, it's coming together pretty nicely, so I'm starting to do highlights. So as you can see here, I'm lightening the parts that are lit by the light from above, flip it to make sure that I'm still not completely off. There's there's a part here that's really bothering me, but at this point I'm not really sure what it is, so I'm pausing from time to time, zooming out to try and squint at it and see what it is. I'll figure it out eventually, but for now it's just really bothering me, so I distract myself by trying to fill in a few details in the cables, the USB plugs, doing the belt buckle, still thinking about what is it, what's bothering me here. Not really sure. So then I go through, try and make my shadows a little deeper, a little richer, darken them up a little bit. And at this point, I'm really staring hard trying to figure out what is it about this that's bothering me? What looks off? And I'm still not really sure. So I'm squinting, doing all kinds of, I'm stepping away from the computer, walking back towards it. Just doing all kinds of weird things that if someone were to watch me, they would probably think I was insane. But you do what you need to, to trick yourself into seeing an image like it was the first time. Because that's the, that's the situation in which it will be judged. Now here I'm trying, I try to select the pixels of the layer where I painted the major. To try and separate her from the background because as you can see I didn't do a hundred percent opacity. There's parts of the major that are transparent. That's intentional. I mean for her to pick up some of the background color. It makes it a little bit easier for the character to mesh with the environment. But it caused a problem. So instead of just selecting and cutting it out, I, I went the hard way and actually erased it by hand. Now I'm filling in some holographic screens to add neat little sci-fi touches that the show is known for. Here I'm playing up the reflective properties of the skin. I thought it needed this specular highlight. It just felt like it was a little underlit. So now this character is really popping out. Starting to really get a good feel for the form. Now there, I turned on an adjustment layer so that I could see it. Basically, if you take a layer, and this doesn't matter what software you're using, if you take a layer, fill it with all black, and set the blend mode to saturation, you can turn that layer on and off to take away all of the color information and see just the values. That's a really good way for you to see whether or not you've made a particular part too dark or too light, or if your image overall just doesn't have enough saturation doesn't have enough contrast. I mean, excuse me. Now here I'm filling in 
rim lighting on the various parts of her face, filling out the eyelashes. So they got blown out. I merged the layers down. And I'm just generally trying to clean up a lot of the hairy pencil lines. Uh, I was very fast and loose when I did the sketch, so it's not very tight, not very clean looking. So I'm kind of paying for that here by having to do a lot of paint over. And that's one of Krita's random crashes to desktop. Stability is a big problem, uh, even now at this point with Krita, but overall I, I really do enjoy it. I especially like the approach it takes to brushes. They feel, they still feel like Photoshop brushes, but they act like painter brushes, if that makes any sense. It's, they're mostly textured. They're very responsive to the angle and pressure that you use. There's no real extra configuration by default. I mean, I know you can do the same with Photoshop brushes, but I find that with Krita, a lot of the finished results feel more painterly. They're, they're, with Photoshop, it's too easy to make something too perfect. But with Krita, there's still the small errors, small intentional mistakes that make a thing feel organic. It makes it feel like a real painting. At the end of the day, though, all tools are the same. So pick whatever you like. Uh, here, I'm trying to fill in the ends of her hair. You can see what I'm doing. I I find that fraying the ends of the hair is very difficult to do if you come just from the top and go to the end. So, as you can see, what I'm doing is I paint up the edge with the background color, and I'm slowly releasing pressure as I come up. That way, you get the impression of the hair thinning out toward its edges, so it's, it's an easier way to fray it to get this nice natural looking end to all of her locks of hair. And I filled in with a very small brush, random single strands, single locks. I find without that the hair feels fake, almost like a, an early 2000s video game or something. Here, secondary highlight. Hair tends to have two highlights. Even with just one light source, it's a property of the, the way hair works, the way the hair is structured. There's always going to be a primary and a secondary highlight. If you're really interested, you can look up the Kajia K lighting model. But the TLDR is two highlights on here always. And here I'm just cleaning it up. I've spotted that part of her neck and I was putting it off because it's kind of complicated. It's got the plugs and the, the weird overlap with the screen in the background. But sooner or later I'd have to get to it so I figured I'd do it now. So I'm just working my way down her side, tighten things up, now here you can see that I used a lighter color just on the underside of her breast, that's because of the reflected light that would be coming off the ground. There's always reflected light in every kind of scene. Uh, even if it's just there's just one light source, there's going to be reflected light somewhere. So it's it's good to keep that in mind as you're lighting. The naive approach would be to say, hey, this is in shadow, so it should just be shadow, right? But that shadow is never really a flat color. So having that that subtle reflected light coming from the ground, coming from her abdomen, because even her own body will reflect light back up into all kinds of other places. So having that subtle change in the shadow really helps to suggest form. Now 
Now here, I'm just filling it in, filling it in, cleaning it up. I couldn't really remember exactly how the tops right here went. I remember they were very angular, but I was too lazy to go look up any kind of reference material for that, so I just let it go. I think I'm close enough, though. I don't know, somebody's probably going to tell me in the comments. I'm totally jacked it up. Here, I'm just filling out more forms. This part got a little muddy because of that damn arm. There's a weird tangent, not really too natural. So it was kind of frustrating me. I wasn't liking it too much by this point, but I still thought I could keep that. I thought I needed it to look that way. So I kept the arm where it is for now. Just dealt with the weird changes in tone and the awkward tangents it left. Um, when I say tangent, I mean two lines at different depths that meet. You typically want to avoid having something like that. Um, if something's at a different depth, they should usually meet at a perpendicular angle, but you never want them to meet at a very close angle. And that's what's going on here between her arm and her ribcage and the silhouette of her breast. There's all kind of weird tangents going on, especially at the top of her breast. And it's throwing off the entire image. Never mind the fact that it really doesn't that's not really a natural way to hold hold your arm. But I'm still ignoring it at this point because I figure I'll come back and deal with it later. So I do something fun, very simple belt buckle. Um, basic shapes like this, rectangles, blocks, circles, they're always fun to light because they're they're the ones you practice the most to start with. Now with belt loops, I tend to have a very simple system. I just have a single dent in the center, which allows me to have this sort of, from top to bottom, light, dark, light, dark kind of pattern. And I've found that that looks the best. In real life, belt loops do all kinds of crazy things, but I find that that makes it an easy read. It's light, dark, light, dark. Very pleasing to the eye. Now, at this point, I've decided to get rid of the problem entirely. So, I just erase that part of her arm, give the suggestion that it's just obfuscated by the rest of her body. She's holding it behind her somewhere. And now, feeling better, I go back through and start adding in small details. I always do seams and zippers on clothing. This it feels too flat to me otherwise. Now I clean it up, just lighting up a bit of her hips. There's actually not a lot of flesh tone paint on her her hips. It's mostly background color, so I had to go through and very lightly add mid tone flesh to the parts facing the viewer to give it a good suggestion of form. And here I'm trying to clean up the cables. And cables that are further away, like that farthest one there, tend to take on the background color, which is a, a trick that you can use to add depth to an image. You can just mix the color of the object you're painting with the overall environment color. And depending on how much you mix it in, gives the impression that it's further and further away. I mean, there's other things that you have to take into account too, but generally that's a good way to suggest that something's far away, or farther than something else you see. And here, I'm adjusting the saturation. After adjusting my values, I played up the lights, brought down the darks, just to give a nice big separation between light and dark. There I added a gradient layer filled with amber just to suggest bleed over into some kind of virtual camera lens from the light that's above. And there you go. So 
So hopefully this video was somewhat useful. Um, check back next week, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.